Hi, I'm Andres. I'm the lead software engineer on the model training team at Always AI. We're excited to bring you the new model training toolkit. It's been the number one most requested feature from our users. We make it simple by making it codeless, pre-configured. You can use your CPU or GPU and it has preset optimized hyperparameters to get you started right away. The model training toolkit is integrated with the rest of the Always AI platform, meaning you can immediately use, upload, and share your models with your colleagues. How do you start? Well, Model Training Toolkit works by combining three easy steps. You collect your data, you annotate your data, and then you train your model. Let's dive in. I'll walk you through the steps and show you how to do it yourself. So the first thing we're gonna do is download the data collection app from the GitHub page, link below. The data collection app well, is an always AI application that'll allow us to collect data on our local machines or on an edge device. In this case, I'll be cloning into my local directory and then running the data collection app on my local machine to collect data from my webcam. So I've cloned that repo and now I'm going to go into the data collection app and run AI app configure to configure the application. So I'm gonna hit create new project to create a new project for this application. I'm gonna give it the name model training demo I'm going to choose my local computer because I want to run this on my laptop. Configuring the application creates a project under your projects. And you can see that model training demo is now there, allowing you to add models to the project or share with collaborators. In this case, I'm going to go back to my terminal and deploy this application locally, or if you're on Mac or Windows, use the command AI app install. In this case, because I'm using Linux, I use AI app deploy. Now, this will pull down the required container for the application. And to start the application, what I'll do is run AI app start. You can see there that it opens up a server, which I can then open in a browser. And it brings up the data collection starter app. Now, this has a few buttons here. It shows you what you're capturing. And I'm going to hit the start collection button to be able to start collecting my data for this application, for this model. So what you see I'm doing here is moving my watch across the screen slowly, turning it to get different angles, trying to capture data and scenarios, which it might be in when I'm running the application. I take it in, inside of the frame, I take it outside of the frame, I turn it in different angles, I put it in front of my face and on its own. And what I might do here is actually put it closer to the screen and farther away from the screen. And in this case, what I'm doing is varying my data to what I expect to run it on when I am running the model in production. This is really important when you're collecting data. It's really important to collect data as you will inference. Now what you can see here is that after I hit stop collection, you can see that there is a video with the timestamp we want in the samples directory. And what we want to do is now start the annotation using the command sudo ai annotate. Now, this will install the software needed to run annotation. In our case, we include CVAT as part of our tool to make it easier for you guys to annotate. Once it's done installing, add your username, create a password, hit yes, and you can see that there's another clickable link to a server which will open up CVAT. Use the same username you just created, use the same password you just created, log in, and you see that there's a window which includes tasks. So I'm gonna hit create new task, and I'm going to name the task model training demo one. After that, what I'm gonna do is add a label. Now I'm gonna add the label watch because that's the model I am training at this point. And then once I'm done adding the label 
what I'll do is take the data, take the video data that we just collected and drag and drop it in to see that so that it can be used in a task. Now I'll hit submit, which will upload the data and go back to tasks, which will show us that there's been a new task created for annotation. I'm going to hit open. And then what I'm going to do is select the new UI. I personally like the new UI, so that's what I'll be using here. Now this will open up the see that annotation tool. And the key thing here is essentially you want to draw a new rectangle, a bounding box for us, and then click track. Now for annotation, essentially what we want to do is throughout this video from frame to frame, what we want to do is move that bounding box with the location of the watch, resizing it as it changes different sizes, as it moves closer or farther away, or maybe changes angle. Now, the nice thing about CVAD is when we are doing smooth motions, for example, we can skip four or five frames ahead and then use the track function to interpolate the box movement, saving us some time. Now this will take you some time. It took me about 20 to 30 minutes to annotate this data set. So I'm gonna fast forward here. And if you are still annotating, feel free to pause the video, come back after you're done with the annotation session. Once I'm done annotating the image, what I'm gonna do is save that progress and then export the data set. I go back to task, hit actions, dump annotations. And the key thing here is you want to select Pascal VOC data set. This is the type of data set that our training tool supports. So if you're importing a pre annotated data set from somewhere else, if you're using the tool, make sure that it's in Pascal VOC and you should be fine. In this case, we can see that it's downloading and now you can see that it's fully downloaded in the bottom left corner. So the next thing we're going to do is you start up the training tool. So the first thing we want to do is grab the data set from where we downloaded it. In this case, it's in my downloads. And we want to use it with the AI train command. So the format is AI train, the path to the data set. And then I'm going to use the dash dash Jupyter file. This will bring up a nice UI, which will give us some visual feedback about how training is going. The other thing that I want to do here, since I have a machine with an NVIDIA GPU, I'm going to use the dash dash hardware flag and I'm going to use that flag and set it to GPU. This will use my GPU, which will help me train faster. But if you don't have a GPU, just leave out that flag and it'll use a CPU. It'll train slower, but you know, feel free to set that off overnight and you should have a working model uh, in the future. So you can see what I'm going to do is open up the train command, I'm going to hit the link that starts with 127. And I'm going to go to the left bar and open up a notebook, IPython notebook file. This will open up a notebook and I'm going to go to the cell and hit run. This will show a few widgets to configure our training session. Now, for this session, based on prior experience, I'm going to train for about 3000 steps. I'm going to enter in my label, which is watch in this case. I'm going to set my train fraction, just going to leave that to default and set my batch size to four. My machine can handle it based off of its memory. And, you know, it's a pretty good default. If you end up with memory issues, just choose a lower batch size. For model ID, I'll give it a model ID, just my username and then the model name, which I'll call model demo. And then the two interesting things that we have to consider here is the plotting of the training feedback. So we have plot loss every n steps. This is the training loss. So how many times do you want to plot that loss? How many steps do you want to wait in between getting a little bit of feedback from the training session? I'm going to choose 10. I want to get feedback in my chart every 10 steps. And then I'm going to choose a validation number also. Validation takes a little bit of time. And so we don't want to choose validate every end steps that is too small because it'll slow down the overall training. In this case, I'm going to choose the number 500 and that'll give us the information to know whether or not the training loss and validation loss are diverging, which would mean that something might be wrong or we're getting into overfitting territory, but not slow us down 
to the point where training will take longer than it really should. I'm going to hit begin training and this will get everything ready and start plotting the validation loss and the training loss in the chart that's created below. This process takes a minute to get the model loaded and everything configured and ready before it starts plotting. But as you can see here, on the left side, you see the first training loss plot. And you can see that it starts out high and it's going lower. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the training loss to decrease over time. Now, it might jump up and down, but the goal is to decrease over time and for the validation loss to essentially follow that graph and not diverge from it. So this is gonna take uh, a little bit of time. I think for me, it took maybe an hour to train this. I'm gonna fast forward through this part to get to the results and show you where we end up and what the results look like. What you can see here is that training loss followed the trend that we expected. It got lower and it does not seem to be improving at the end, but the validation loss also seems to be following the training loss, meaning that we're not overfitting and it seems to have trained enough. So I'm going to hit shut down notebook to close the notebook and get to the next step in my process, which is going to be uploading the model to the model catalog for use in an application and also for use with other collaborators that I have or other projects that I have. So to publish the model, what I'm gonna do is use the command AI model publish and then the model ID. Again, just my username and the model name, model demo. This may take a minute. But as you can see here, what we have is the model that we just created, which is stored in the cache version 0.1 has been published to the catalog and changed to version one in the catalog. Now, if we go to the catalog and look at my models, what we'll see is that the model is there under my models for use with our account. Now what we're gonna do is take that model that we just created, we uploaded to the model catalog, and we're going to try it out in an always AI application. So I'm gonna use the command AI get starter apps to get the starter apps, and I'm gonna be using the starter app real-time object detector to test this model out since we just created an object detection model. So CD into that directory. And then what I'm gonna do is change the app.py to use the model that we're going to be using. So in this case, up at the top, we are going to be changing the model ID that's there right now to the model ID for the model that we just created. Next, what we're gonna do is use the AI app models add command to add that model to this application. Now this command is gonna tell always AI hey, this model is associated with this application and you should install it when you try to install this application. So I'm gonna use AI app configure to configure this application that we're using to test the model. I'm gonna hit create new project, give it another project name. Hit local computer because that is where I wanna run it using my webcam and then use AI app deploy to install this application. This process will install the models that we need along with any other dependencies that we need to run this application. So once this is done, what we're gonna do is start the application and see how this model's performing. As you can see here, it grabs the watch pretty well. 
We've created a model that identifies your objects in your unique environment. Now go collect data and tune that model for your specific application.